Hi guys, it's Felix here. Um, this is going to be somewhat of a response to uh, Noah Arthur's Climbing the Mountain video. Um, as you can see here, we're actually at the top of a mountain, uh, Mount Hotham in Australia. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll use some tips to help you actually climb to the top. So I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Alright, so I'm just going to be talking about some of, sort of my ideas uh, relating to practice. Um, I probably won't be as articulate as Noah was in his video, and if you haven't seen his original video, it's it's very good. Um, I'll, there'll probably be a link in the description for it, Noah Arthur's mountain video. Um, also, it might be a little bit hard to sort of explain all these concepts, and you know, given that every person learns and does things differently and improves differently, this might not be you know entirely relevant to absolutely everyone. Um, now, most of you will notice, you know, if I get a question or like, someone asks me, you know, how do I improve, how do I get from, you know, this seconds, like 15 seconds to 10 seconds or something like that, uh, most of the time I'll just, uh, I'll just reply and just say practice. Um, and here I'm going to be sort of going into a bit more depth about what I really mean. Um, so this was Noah's mountain model, so this is the mountain, so you start down here or whatever. And he's got, he's got his uh, his axes as skill here, skill here, and capability here. And what he means by that is, you know, skill you get from just doing, just practice, just solving, and capability you get from doing what he called deliberate practice, which is you know, stuff like learning new algorithms, solving things in, in different ways. Um, and he's, he has it as like steps like that. And you know, really big step. So really big step there, you know, might be you know, learning something like F2L, right? Uh, and once you learn F2L, obviously, well, I mean, okay, here, you've made it to the top of the step, but you can't really move on. You need to practice it a lot you know, to, to get to the next sort of step, right? Um, so yeah, so, and solving in, in different ways as well, doing stuff like slow solving. And, well, if you if you notice, if you try and solve differently to what you do currently in, say, a slow solve, if you're practicing just a slow solve, you probably, you'll find that you won't actually do too much different to what you would normally do in a speed solve. And that's because you're just you're just doing what you know. You're not you're not doing anything you know special or different, and for this I think for this to discover sort of new ways of solving and new tricks, um, I think the best way of learning new tricks for doing stuff like centers and F2L is to just watch example solves from other fast people. Still, I find myself watching videos from people like uh, like Mats and Kevin, and they solve you know they solve cases in different ways to what I do. You know, something that I you know I wouldn't have thought of. Maybe maybe I'll use it. Maybe I won't. But they just do it differently, and it's it's good to have the, you know really broad perspective on you know all the d different types of of cases and all the different ways you can solve them. Um, and some of the, some of them may not be like trivial, like stuff like it might seem weird, but like and even I think when I was you know doing you know twelve second solves or something. I didn't realize that there was a really easy do, way to do this case. Like I would like separate them and then solve them. But stuff like this, it's just I use your dark run. Stuff like that. And also um, another sort of non-trivial thing. I mean, there's so many I could go into, but just stuff like um, stuff like this, right? If you've got four by four centers, your instinct would probably be to just you know pair these ones up. And then put them up at the top, like that. But I think that you know something even faster and something you may not think of, but you know something that's really easy is just to go R prime F R, which is way faster. Just go like that, right? Um, and there's so many, so many different little different tricks and tips that you'll you know you'll find from other videos that'll that'll really help you like that. Um, and that'll help you, you know, get a, a new way of looking at the puzzles. It means you're not, you know, stuck in the same mindset. Um, now, a lot of people say, you know, mindless, you know, solving, doing hours and hours of solving, just 
just you know straight speed solves on QQ timer or whatever, or whatever just timing them. But a lot of people say you know that doesn't really that doesn't really help you uh, in terms of you know like skill level. All it does is maybe you know solidify what you know, and that's true to an extent. But um, I think my main view is that uh, your main sort of improvement is going to come. Well, obviously, once once you've learned like CFOP. Your main improvement is just going to come from practice because you know my view is that when you're doing something over and over again you you naturally become more efficient at it um, so if we have like for um, for solving your ultimate goal is to not do any active thinking during your solves you don't want to be thinking about anything on the cube you just want it to be you know all muscle memory and you know you'll find when you, you learn new algorithms or something uh, you'll notice that you know while you may be able to do say I don't know like a G perm a G perm by itself, um, but when you you know when you're confronted with that when that case with that case in a solve right like you may be able to do it quickly by itself but in a solve you'll if you learn the a new algorithm you'll find you know you'll you'll have a bit of a pause uh, you'll obviously be a bit slower with execution. And your solve will be interrupted. So obviously, in this sense, the purpose of you know practicing new things is to consolidate what you know. So it's all in muscle memory. So you don't have to think about how you're solving the puzzle. Um, another thing I'd like to mention is uh, in, in terms of like finger tricks. Um, I think that most of my finger tri tricks I just developed through just lots and lots of solving. I didn't like go out and you know, learn. Oh, I have to do this, 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 and stuff. I just sort of knew what moves I had to do in the algorithm, and then I would just do whatever felt sort of natural. And throughout doing lots of solving, they'd just you know become more efficient. Um, yes. Yeah, so for something like one-handed, like it's it's really obvious to see you know the effect of practice. Like, so if I'm using my left hand, right, I'm I'm you know I'm really comfortable just doing you know just like sexy move triggers like that. You know, R, R prime. But if I use my right hand, which I've never practiced on, you know, it's actually really it's really uncomfortable. So, you know, if you practice, you get better at it. That's that's it's simple, right? Um, another thing people say is, you know, oh, just if you if you drill like your PLLs, if you practice them, you know, specifically. If you just you know go away for ten minutes and just do your T perm specifically, um, that'll make you faster. Well, or just like practicing something else by itself, practicing F two L or practicing look ahead by itself, um, that'll make you faster. But I think the only thing that really combines everything is obviously just to solve the entire cube. Um, so, for example, for practicing PLLs, you know it's it's okay to practice the execution of say a T perm for a little bit. But the best practice for algorithms is going to come in a solve, because you know you're not going to have a perfect grip on on the TPM every time, right? Like every single case, where whatever OL you have, you'll have a different sort of grip. Like say it's like that net that now for a soon, right? It'll be completely different for an anti soon. It's like here, my my thumb's here, right? My fingers up there, so. Uh, well, yeah, well, you get you get sort of my idea. Like your your gripping and your finger tricks will be different every time leading into the T pen. And also stuff like depending on the AUF. Um, so for a T pen, like if you do it, execute it. Like I know exactly how I'm going to AUF it. Like that. Instead of just doing the T pen and then regripping and then doing a U. Those are the sort of efficiencies and optimizations that you just develop. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty much it. I hope it wasn't sort of too confusing. Uh, yeah, that's. If you've got any questions and stuff, um, leave them in the comments. And if I if I think of any more ideas or stuff like that, I'll hopefully just post some comments or reply to that. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. See ya.